and welcome to the Trading Belt. Now, we are here and APSA have released their H1 2024 financial results. And I'll be having a conversation with Abdi Mohammed, the CEO, APSA Bank, right after an introduction of his profile. Abdi Mohammed assumed the role of CEO and Managing Director of APSA Bank Kenya PLC in May 2023, bringing over 28 years of extensive experience in the financial sector. A Kenyan national, Abdi's journey within the APSA group has been marked by strategic leadership and diverse executive roles across geographical landscapes. Prior to his current role, Abdi served as the managing director of APSA Bank Tanzania and acted as the managing executive for retail and business banking, overseeing operations across various African regions where APSA operates. His comprehensive expertise was also demonstrated as the chief operating officer for the bank in Kenya. Abdi's career within the organization spans pivotal roles, including director of retail and business banking in Kenya and Zambia, as well as operations efficiency manager at Barclays Global Retail and Commercial Bank in London. Beyond his executive responsibilities, Abdi is an influential figure in the banking community. He actively contributes in the banking industry's progress as a member of the Kenya Bankers Association Governing Council and is also a board member at UN Global Compact Network Kenya, where he champions the principles of responsible corporate citizenship and sustainability. Academically, Abdi holds a Bachelor of Commerce Honours from Kenyatta University, a Master's in Business Administration from Edith Cowan University with an Advanced Management Program at IMD Business School in Switzerland. Abdi, good to see you again. Good to see you, Maina. Yeah. Thank you so much. Very well, and yeah. congratulations on the numbers. I have seen it, 16% increase in terms of your uh, growth numbers. And I just wanted to get your immediate feelings on this and maybe you could highlight uh, some of the drivers that led to this. Yeah, I think we are, we are pleased with the numbers yeah. um, given the dynamic environment in which they right. have been delivered. 16% mm -hmm. uh, revenue growth. Yeah. Uh, twenty nine percent at the PBT level, yeah. um, and we continue to show uh, growth and momentum mm -hmm. uh, in the market despite the regional, international uh, economic challenges right. that uh, that exist. Mm -hmm. uh, in the results, we also showed some videos mm -hmm. on uh, our customers yeah. talking about the bank, mm -hmm. talking about what we have been able to do with them. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day. Uh, whenever you report these numbers, it's always good to keep sight mm -hmm. of the fact that these are real customers out there yeah. uh, running their businesses, um, growing the economy, mm -hmm. providing employment, mm -hmm. and the bank plays this role. Yeah. So as we grow, as we show these numbers of growth, yeah. it's good to see the overall impact yeah. that uh, we continue to have on the economy as well. Absolutely. You know, one of the key things they say is that as you keep growing, the challenge is always to keep the momentum. <laughs> and I want to appreciate what you have done. Yeah. Let's talk about the operating environment. You've alluded to it. And one of the things that I have seen is that your environment seems to keep changing. Uh, things keep, uh, you know, navigating the murky waters. Before we even go to the international level, looking at uh, right in the country, I'm talking about the CBR, inflation, I've seen it go down and a bit of the policy, you know, always not very predictable. Though they have, someone could argue there has been some stability in it now, but yeah. how are you seeing the environment? I think within uh, the monetary policy environment, yeah. we have seen stability. Okay. We have also seen clear actions that have been taken mm -hmm. over the course of the last one, one and a half years yeah. that have translated into outcomes that are actually positive for the market. Yeah. So if I take the example of inflation, yeah. end of 2022, it was north of 9%. Absolutely. Uh, a number of actions were taken by the MPC mm -hmm. over this period of time that has shown mm -hmm. the inflation rate come down yeah. over that period. Yeah. Supported, of course, also by good agricultural production, yeah. food prices, and a number of other factors. Yeah. But, um, you know, the implementation of the uh, corridor policy, as we call it, mm -hmm. in terms of how monetary policy actions mm -hmm. translate into into the economy that has had a big impact uh, the rate decisions that the mpc took over this period of time mm -hmm. has had an impact as well and a very good working relationship okay. with the industry okay. um, has also helped as well mm -hmm. if you look at uh, the foreign exchange market yeah one year one and a half years back mm -hmm. uh, there were liquidity issues yeah 
the rate was at 1 160 or thereabout Absolutely. and we've seen consistently yeah. through the action the joint action of the industry yeah. as well as the central bank and the monetary policy committee mm -hmm. we've seen this start to drive the rates in the right direction yeah um, and where we are sitting today mm -hmm. uh, stable rate for okay. the last few months mm -hmm. good liquidity yeah uh, that support supports the import market uh, good export inflows uh, good diaspora inflows All right. and we're seeing a lot of stability in that in that market as well okay so there the, the is stuff that is going on that is quite positive uh -huh. um, the growth in GDP mm -hmm. I think is another important aspect that we spoke about uh, this morning okay uh, but at the same time mm -hmm. um, we've seen consumer mm -hmm. uh, spending uh, not as high as it used to be. Yeah. Uh, we've seen disposable incomes lower mm -hmm. than they were before, mm -hmm. and we continue working with our customers through this cycle. So it's a it's a mixed and dynamic environment. Okay. okay. And uh, our job is to make sure that we continue <laughs> balancing and operating within within that environment. Absolutely. In fact, speaking about that, you spoke uh, and mentioned sixty four billion in lending. And I thought, wow, that's that's quite a significant number. Of course, to support your customers and see them through their businesses, be it uh, their personal loans and everything else. But I was keen to check on your digital lending, which has also significantly gone up. And uh, one of the components is uh, Lariba. Um, and I wanted to ask you, because I have spoken to some of the uh, persons in the industry as well, and there's a keen focus on what I would call moving down to the ethical ways of lending, moving down to the customers and what probably are their beliefs and everything else. Is this something that you spotted uh, and resulted to this, but I wanted to get the mindset behind yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So, um, of course, one of the things that we do uh, is ensure that we are supporting our customers and we are providing funding yeah. for for the businesses that they, they wish to do. Yeah. Um, and our traditional lending book continues to grow. Yeah. Uh, we are seeing also the digital lending mm -hmm. aspect mm -hmm. uh, come into play as well and sure. something that we are very pleased about. Mm -hmm. But also you have unique segments yeah. of the market. Yeah. And the Islamic banking segment is, you know, one, one of those yeah. where there is a requirement mm -hmm. for ethical practices okay. that are in line with the requirements of the Islamic uh, yeah. system. Faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we were one of the pioneers mm -hmm in this market and, and I was privileged to be one of the people that were there yeah. at that time mm -hmm. when we launched Islamic banking in 2005 yeah. um, and we were the first bank to do that mm. in, the, in, in Kenya. Yeah. And since then we've been continuously improving the product set, mm -hmm. ensuring that we are present in the right locations yeah. for that uh, segment but also working with our Sharia Council mm -hmm. who advise us on matters to do with Islamic banking mm -hmm. to ensure that we are providing products that are ethical yeah. and that are fit for that uh, population. Mm -hmm. But another area, and, and you would have seen some of the commentary in our report, yeah. is uh, women in business yep. and ensuring that we are focusing on women-led businesses in our country. Mm -hmm. And it's another aspect of a unique segment yeah that uh, addresses our diversity mm -hmm. uh, requirements as yeah. an organization. Mm -hmm. And we've done a lot of work in that space as well, both in terms of core lending mm -hmm. and, and driving the book, but also in terms of empowerment mm -hmm. through knowledge mm -hmm. and supporting our women customers yeah. uh, to get better okay. at running their, their businesses. Okay. And congratulations on that, especially on the women banking yeah. part as well. You know, when I looked at the map you presented, they, this uh, a bit of a bullish way of looking towards the global market. I think you've opened branches in Beijing, USA, Europe, and all that. Just wanted you to touch on that. Um, in as much as we are also looking at the global geopolitics that are also affecting the business, what's your comments on that? ABSA, as you know, yeah. is a pan-African organization that mm -hmm. is present in many locations in yeah. Africa. Yeah. Um, one of the things we've added to that picture mm -hmm. is that we are now also internationally present. Yeah. Um, in the US, we have a, a strong team mm -hmm. uh, present there mm -hmm. that is helping us channel mm -hmm. uh, investments, mm -hmm. inquiries, 
and ensures that we are supporting yeah. um, the inflows into into Kenya. Yeah. I've been there to to that office. I've met some of the key investors that we have there. Mm -hmm. I've met some of our clients there. I think there are real opportunities in that U.S. Kenya corridor. Um, we've uh, also got our offices in the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, the corporate team here in Kenya and myself have been there, mm -hmm. have met them, have met some of the large corporates based out of the UK, but also with interests in Europe and the surrounding uh, countries. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity. Okay. We are very excited about the latest, which is Beijing. Okay. Um, and really looking at that China corridor. Yeah. Uh, and how we can continue participating in that as well. As you know, uh, there's a large Chinese community here mm -hmm. that is doing business, mm -hmm. but there are also many Kenyans, mm -hmm. um, large corporates, small businesses that trade yeah. uh, between Kenya and, and China. Yeah. And we're looking at how to position the bank mm -hmm. to ensure that we are facilitating and supporting Mm -hmm. uh, the, the trade flows in those in those corridors. So strategically, a very, very important development for us. Okay. Something that we are really, really proud of. Mm -hmm. And we are starting to see uh, mm -hmm. the flows coming okay. through in our in our books as well. Mm -hmm. But as you said, uh, you know, distribution is not just global. Yeah. You would have seen where we are now in the map of Kenya as mm -hmm. well. Yes. Um, and we are really, really happy okay. with the kind of connectivity uh, through a combination of branch, ATM, cash mm -hmm. depositor, uh, as well as the agency banking network, which is now 3,000 strong yeah. uh, in all the counties of Kenya. Okay. So we say Tupo Ulipo. Okay. And Tupo Ulipo is not just about physical, yeah. but it's also digital. Okay. If you are in a digital ecosystem, we want to be there with you okay. as well. So that's, that's the plan. <laughs> well done on that, Tupo Ulipo. Now, good work on the efficiency levels. I think I noticed there was a drop on cost income ratio. Uh, when I was looking through the numbers, I also noticed some staff increment and uh, which I wanted to as well ask you, is this in line with your strategy of growth and, and what's driving those increments as well? Yes, it is part of the overall strategy. Yeah. And what you will see in terms of the staff increment yeah. is nearly 100% of this increment is in what we call the front office. Ah. Uh, people who are supporting mm -hmm. and dealing with customers on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, you will see reductions mm -hmm. in areas where we can improve productivity, okay. where we can automate and ensure that we are using more digital means. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in the back office, in credit decisioning, and in many of those areas where you can use AI and other automated uh, methods yeah. uh, to, to, to run the bank. So it's a combination. The areas where we're really focusing on productivity and cost cutting and efficiency. Mm -hmm. And there are areas where we feel that our customers require an individual in that space. And you will see that there is, uh, there is growth there as well. Okay. So yeah, it's a, it's a balance between the two. Mm -hmm. And we are in a, in a good position around cost income ratio. Yeah that allows us to actually invest more uh -huh. because our cost income ratio is in a very good place in the 30s. Okay. Um, so we believe that there's room there for us to do a bit more, more investment. All right, still on the numbers. You know, last time we spoke, um, I was drumming your drums big time because uh, you were still on a single digit on NPLs. Uh, <laughs> looks like you have come uh, to what I would call what the industry has been looking at. It's not double digits. We are at 11.2%. Yeah. Well, someone may argue it's not such a great uh, significant number yeah. compared to the industry level, Correct. Uh, which is at 166 I believe. Correct. Um, but how? what are you seeing with this? And you touched a little bit on the retail investors, but how are you seeing them? Um, yeah, of course, with regards to NPL, yeah. it's always a factor of the cycle mm -hmm. and where we are in the economic cycle of the country. Mm -hmm. um, there are sectors, as I said, that are doing extremely well. Yeah. Uh, we are seeing very good performances in agriculture. Mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing good performances in tourism. Yeah. Uh, we're going, seeing good performances yeah. in trading. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, there are sectors where we see mm -hmm. uh, that, that there is stress. Yeah. And for us, as I said, uh, we try and work with our customers through these difficult periods. Yeah. And you would have seen 1.3 billion mm -hmm. of restructuring mm -hmm. 
that we have done for, for our customers. Yeah. But the NPL number is up. Yeah. largely on account of some of the underperforming uh, sectors, yeah. but also uh, the retail unsecured, um, you know, salaried individuals, et cetera, mm -hmm. where we have seen uh, stresses as well, yeah. um, and, and we continue to, to, to work with them. Uh, but overall, as you say, you know, yeah. uh, yes, double digit, but very low double digit, m almost 500 basis points yeah. lower, uh, than the industry average, yeah. uh, more than 10 lower than some of the, the, the top Absolutely. in the industry. Yeah. So, you know, we, 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 we feel that there is some work we need to do mm -hmm. to get back to the single digit. Okay. But at the same time, it's also a factor of the cycle and where we are in the, in the economic cycle. Okay. So you're still positive with your restructuring that the customers are going to still you know, meet to the game, is it? Absolutely. Okay. For us, the way we approach uh, these type of cycles yeah. is we are not in the business of closing down customers' businesses. Okay. Okay. We're in the business of helping them mm. and working with them through the cycle. Okay. And there are many, many great examples, okay. um, including the COVID years, mm. uh, some of the hotel industry clients that mm -hmm. we worked with yeah. are now some of our best performing customers. So okay. we feel that it's in the interest of the industry mm -hmm. to work with our customers through through this period. Excellent. So as we come to a close of the conversation, uh, we have to speak to the shareholders, definitely, and you have some good news for them. I want you to deliver the news. What have you given them <laughs> in these heavy results? So we yeah. announced a dividend of uh, 0 0.2 uh, shillings per ordinary share okay. that will be paid somewhere in the middle of October. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at our total dividend payouts for the last three years, yeah. year on year, we have consistently increased. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned out there, we have a policy of balancing very finely between yeah reinvesting yeah. some of the returns mm -hmm. for future growth, yeah. but also invest, you know, providing a return Absolutely. to our shareholders. And I think we are doing that balance uh, quite well yeah. so far. Yeah. Okay. I think I want to close by really talking to you about, I know you're about to launch your sustainability report, but you've also been doing quite a lot. I've seen you really enabling customers, uh, especially businesses. I've seen some videos as well play around it. I just wanted you to part uh, us with uh, what are you looking at and how is the progress on your sustainability? So sustainability is a very, very important part yeah. of the work that we do in APSA. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a key component of our board and group commitments. Yeah. Um, to ensure that we are delivering on our sustainability agenda You're right. in line with the, with the SDGs. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a 13-point plan mm -hmm. on which we measure ourselves. Okay. Uh, we launched our report last year. Mm -hmm. We are launching the 2024 report next week. Yeah. Um, the overall summary is that we are on course okay. in terms of our sustainability agenda, okay. ranging from diversity mm -hmm. to helping the youth, to helping startups, mm -hmm. uh, to environmental and climate uh, finance issues. Yeah. There's a whole raft okay. of uh, items mm -hmm. on which we track ourselves okay. and it's going quite well. Okay. We're, we're really proud of the progress so far. You know, I would be skinned if I don't ask you this. Q3 full year, what is your outlook? <laughs> the outlook is positive. Okay. Okay. We did g give, um, you know, um, kind of forward uh, indication okay. uh, in the in the results announcement. Uh, the expectation is one of continued growth, obviously uh, taking account of the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of continued innovation. It's one of bringing more solutions to our customers. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the way we look at our plan is we look at it in a rolling manner. So yeah. the next half is important, yeah. but the next five years is equally important. Okay. So it's about momentum today, but it's also about transformation for mm -hmm. the future so that we can continue providing sustainable return to, to our shareholders. Abdi, always a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you so much, my <laughs> friend. It's no. good to see you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. There you have it. Abdi Mohamed, very optimistic about the future outlook and even good news for you, the shareholders as well. And we will wait and really have a conversation again once the results come in, uh, once the year ends on their books. That's it for now. I live in our with the markets.